was time to hook up some electrical service. I started with the meter box and I put in two 8 foot long copper grounding rods according to code. Actually I exceeded code a bit. Here's just the end of one of the grounding rods. Then it was time to go inside and connect up the switches and a fuse box. Details about why I had to do all this are on the website. Just understand that it wasn't easy to wrangle those two thick, two aught cables through the hole in the wall and into the switch boxes. Sherry had to help me get it done. Figuring out that I could use that rebar bender to inch the cable around the corner was a highlight. Anyway, eventually I got it all hooked up, including one breaker and one construction outlet, and I called for the inspection. I failed the inspection. I had the grounding rods and most of the fuse box in okay, but I couldn't find any instructions for the big switches and I'd done them wrong. Basically, to keep things neat, I'd come in from the bottom with the power, and then through the fuses and switches, and then out into the fuse box. But this meant that the fuses were on the hot side of the switch, so the fuses would be live even when the power is disconnected. The inspector was nice and encouraging about it, but I still felt like an idiot once I understood what I had done. There was also the matter of not using metal lock nuts, which I didn't think I needed with PVC pipe, but I guess I did. And a few other, even more serious mistakes that are too embarrassing to even point out, so if you can see them here, don't mention them in the comments. Fixing all this would require me to remove all the cable, basically time and money wasted, and buy even longer pieces, even more money. I would also have to pay for an extra electrical inspection, but at least the inspector had taught me a few things before he left. I don't have any footage of the redo, but rather than wrestle everything through that one hole, I'd used a second path for the second switch. I also fed the wire through the conduit before mounting it in place. I did still use that rebar bender trick to get things around corners, but it wasn't as necessary this time because things weren't packed as tightly. So you can see here the power wraps around from the bottom around to the top, then it goes through the switch and then the fuses, and then wraps around again so we can exit from the top right. Here's how it looked going into the breaker panel with its single breaker, and then out the bottom into the outlet. And here's the meter socket outside. I added that little PVC box at the bottom to connect to that second hole. Pass the second inspection, and we could schedule to have power connected. There's a whole lot more detail about the ridiculousness of this whole thing on the website, but let me just say that the trucks and about five guys were there for two days, and probably spent less than three hours actually working. The digger machine was very custom. It was like a treaded Swiss army knife. It had a, an excavation arm on the front that they used to start the trench, and then they flattened the ground out with this horizontal blade, but most of the trenching work was done with this plow chainsaw combo tool on the back. Actually, I had hoped they would use that chainsaw tool, but they didn't even need it. The plow blade actually has a hole in it for placing the wire as it cuts, and then just recovers the trench as it moves forward. And here is the time lapse, but get ready because it was very quick. First pass just to clear the way, then the second pass does the trench and lays the cables. Then they came back up again to fill in the dug portion of the trench. The final hookup was also done pretty quickly. Then they told me everything was working and they left. So the family gathered around and I dramatically threw the switch. And then the main fuse. I didn't know. This is kind of funny. What happened? Yeah, yeah what's wrong? Yeah. He's he's maybe this one can use that. This is kind of funny. Disgusted. Clearly I couldn't find the humor at the time. A couple hours later, someone else from the power company showed up to do one more little thing. Threw the switch again. And we finally had electricity. I could work after dark without keeping up the neighbors with the generator noise. Of course, every silver lining comes with a bill.